Hi there everybody, Chris from the Karki at Blue Rhino Safaris. It's a lovely hot day in Gauteng, there's a heat wave going through and uh, it's probably the best time to talk about fridges. Uh, fridges are one of those, is one of those subjects that um, causes a lot of consternation. Um, our fridges that we have in our vehicles, we generally see them as a small version of what we have in our kitchen and that is not quite true. Uh, the fridges in our vehicles are very small in space. Uh, take a 40 liter, compare that to a 600 liter. Um, there's massive differences in, in how fridges operate in a 12 volt in environment uh, in your vehicle and also in your, uh, in your kitchen. So let's go through a few things uh, quickly. The, the fridge is something that probably will use the most power on your battery system. Uh, of any appliance that you have and if you have two fridges then you just doubled up on the amount of power that you consume so the first thing I'm going to do is to show you the power consumption of the two fridges that I've running in my vehicle at the moment I was down in the Drakensberg we came back yesterday and they've now been running as fridges for 27 hours uh, without a recharge so my battery monitor system gives me the exact amp hours that I've consumed and these amp hours are fridge amp hours. Now, if you look at the app uh, on on the uh, on the app, you will see that the total consumed power is 62 amp hours. So the fridges I have uh, is a 60 liter National Luna, which runs at three degrees, just as a fridge. And then I also have my 19 liter Indel B, also at 3 degrees. So I'm bu running both those fridges for the weekend in the Drakensberg. Um, didn't need to take anything frozen with. And these two fridges combined used a power consumption of 62 amp hours and they did that in 27 hours in that time no charging nothing from the vehicle uh, nothing from solar vehicles been standing under um, under a roof for that time so they've been running conditions outside have been fairly hot and the fridges were set at three degrees both of them so first thing that you have to realize about the fridge is what this means if I go to the National Lunar Fridges and I have the digital readout, for example, or the Indel B or the Engels, whichever fridge you're talking about at the moment, um, you can set your fridge at a temperature digitally. And I can set my fridge at 3 degrees if I want it to be at 3 degrees. Now, it's one thing to give the command to the fridge as to what it needs to achieve. But that fridge needs to achieve it in a very power efficient way as not to destroy your batteries now the other fridge that you get with that doesn't have the digital readout just as a normal dial like the old angles would have had which had um, zero and then fridge and then a freezer setting now let me explain to you how this works the way a, a fridge works is that you have your fridge compartment on this side and then through a series of copper pipes and a heat exchanger you pump a gas through a heat exchanger you compress it and it takes up the heat from inside the fridge it comes out and then it disperses the heat on the heat exchanger on the outside and then goes back again to the inside and you keep running that and the, the pump that does that is called a compressor a fridge compressor and that's the cycle that you keep running now mechanically or chemically or thermodynamically actually the heat exchanger on this side has to disperse the heat that it took out from the inside of the fridge and this is something that we call delta T delta is the difference so delta T your temperature between the outside of the fridge because your fridge is sitting in an environment on the outside so delta T on a typical fridge setup let's say for sake of ease is 40 degrees celsius 
Now that 40 degrees Celsius is the maximum that your fridge can cool down in relation to what is on the outside. So if I take my fridge and I put it inside of another fridge and my environment, let's say I bring to zero. So the fridge is inside another fridge sitting at zero. Then this fridge, if it's off, would be at zero. If it was running at full speed, it would be minus 40 degrees. So your delta T, which is your maximum temperature difference between outside and inside, will be minus 40. So the coldest your fridge will then be is minus 40 degrees. All right. If I take the same fridge and I put it inside the back of my canopy, and it's a hot summer's day outside let's say i'm driving through the Karoo. the Karoo it's 32 degrees celsius the canopy is closed baking in the sun let's add 10. i'm sitting at 42 degrees celsius inside the canopy with the airflow that i have available suddenly if i set my fridge at maximum and i subtract my 40 degrees from this my T for my fridge will be plus 2. Now, plus 2, if I was hoping to have it as a freezer, um, this is not going to work because I'm sitting with a plus 2 on the outside. And many people arrive in the camp in the afternoons and they open the canopy, they look at the freezer. The freezer is set at minus 15. And they open the canopy and it's sitting at plus 1 something like that and it's a disaster because the fridge is not working something is wrong with the fridge and this is exactly what it is this delta t of minus 40 degrees celsius is the thermodyna thermodynamic uh, set that you have for a freezer and this is the limitations of a fridge and a freezer in the bush so your delta t of 40 degrees minus 40 is the absolute maximum that you can gain on your environment so if you if you look at it like that then you realize that you are in for a hiding in most cases when camping because it's hot outside the the freezer is always standing at a, a, a funny place so let's look at one of the scenarios people say now we set the freezer down to to the lowest it can go and while we're driving uh, the freezer is, is cooling down lovely and everything is working lucky. So we set it at minus 20 degrees Celsius. We set the freezer at minus 20 and then we drive. We close it in the canopy and the temperature inside this canopy goes up to 50. If you have 50 degrees on the outside, the maximum cool uh, temperature that you can achieve with the fridge is a plus 10. So you'll never achieve the minus 20. What this means is the fridge is striving for minus 20 because I set it to go to minus 20. But I can only go down to plus 10. I cannot go any further because the environment is way too hot. That means the fridge is going to run all day long. So if you are standing and not, not charging the, the batteries, this fridge is just going to drain your batteries. So how can I improve my, my setup? Well, the one thing you can change is the outside temperature. If I change the environment on the outside of the fridge and I bring this down to, let's say, a more manageable 25 degrees Celsius, let's say the fridge is inside of the vehicle and I've got the aircon running. The fridge now sits in an environment of 25 degrees Celsius. I've got it set at minus 20. So the coldest it can get from plus 25 would be a minus 15. Sorry, a minus 15. That's a lot better. And I achieved that by putting the fridge in a cooler environment. So what is critical for the environment of a fridge? One is airflow. You want the airflow to be there. You don't want to close a fridge up and pack um, blankets and everything on the breathing areas of a fridge because then the heat exchanger cannot exchange its heat. Very important. The second thing is if you can pack it inside of your vehicle where there's an aircon, then the efficiency of the fridge will be much better. 
Um, those are things to, to think of. The, the last thing to think about is if I have a fridge and I only have a 40 liter packing space inside of this fridge, if my stew is finished, we finished eating dinner and the stew is warm sitting in a, in a Tupperware bucky and it has to go into the fridge, if I take that warm bucky and I put it in a 40 liter space, the fridge temperature will go through the roof because I'm heating up a small space with a hot um, object and the temperatures will just go and the fridge will run forever to cool that food down. Just because you've introduced a relatively large amount of food which is too hot. What you do is you leave that food in the vehicle where animals cannot get to it overnight allow the cold air of the night to cool that food down and then tomorrow morning just before um, you're ready to go at six seven eight o'clock in the morning you pack your your fridge the warm beers don't take the warm beers from behind the fridge and pack it in the afternoon do it in the morning so leave everything out to cool down overnight and in the morning you can pack your fridge in that way the fridge receives goods that are already semi-chilled and it only needs to cool it down a little bit. That means that the fridge doesn't run all the time to achieve the temperatures that you've set. The second thing to think of is not to set your freezer at minus 20. Minus 20 is just so low that you will almost never get to it. If it's in the winter and it's cold outside, yes, you will achieve that. But if you're in Kalakhalakhari in Nosop and it's middle of October then you're never gonna get to minus 20 so rather give the fridge some space around it for some nice air movement and um, bring it to a minus 7 probably is good enough if you're just there for a week slush I call it slush puppy but if you have a slush ice around your frozen foods um, where the the meat packets are still sort of um, slushy then that's cold enough that food will not go bad in the week's time that you are there uh, you don't need things to be deep frozen you will destroy your batteries if you uh, uh, aim for the minus 20 if the nights are very cold open the vehicle let the fridge get the cold air and then set the temperature down because then your efficiency is much better and that delta t of minus 40 will play into your hands so think about how does the fridge actually achieve the delta t of minus 40 so remember if i set a temperature that is just a goal that's my instruction to the fridge and the fridge will then have to work to get there but it can only do a maximum of minus 40 degrees from outside so if you want to do experiment go to your fridge take a thermometer and put it next to your fridge when you're driving and you're camping and that a thermometer will tell you um, whatever the temperature is around the fridge and if you then deduct your 40 degrees celsius you will understand where you can get to with um, with your fridge so with that in mind uh, let me give you a, an example of the fridge power consumption that i had um, over the weekend so i had a consumption of 62 amp hours in 27 uh, hours over 27 hour period and it was two fridges and let's say fridges will generally have a a reported amp hour draw of two and a half three three and a half something like that whatever it is and that is normally the the average over an hour of the consumption of the fridge now in this case we can see it was 62 amp hours in 27 hours so first thing i'll do is i'll take 62 and we'll divide it by 27 which gives me 2.2 .2 amps per hour divided by 2 is 1.14 so running as a fridge running as a fridge I got about 1.15 amp hours per fridge of consumption if I have a 105 amp hour bat battery 
and I only want to consume 40 then 1.15 divided or 40 divided 1.15 is 34 hours so the way I used my fridge not packing anything new because we were coming back the fridge were just basically running fridge wasn't specifically full um, it was standing in the garage so it was fairly cool but at that condition to drain one battery by 40 amp hours I would have 34 hours on one fridge if I was only running one fridge and if you start doing your calculations like this you can get an understanding of battery life um, what is going to be the problems that you have um, those type of things calculating how many batteries you you will now need obviously 34 hours at my conditions I don't I only need a 105 battery I don't need anything more than that if I was running it as a freezer then 1.15 would have gone up let's say it would go up to 2.5 amp hours and then if I divide my 40 by 2.5 I have 16 hours now the question is is a 105 good enough for this it is more than 12 which means it will last me through the night but it's getting very close to is it good enough or not do I need a second battery because um, if I do anything more if I run an inverter or I um, run a lot of lights or I have a second fridge then this is going to be a problem and that's why I normally say one battery per fridge is roughly what you need if you're running two fridges you should have two batteries otherwise you're just going to destroy your batteries at some point all right so I hope this helps you um, with regards to fridges any questions please let me know cheers